Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Captain Evan Salve. I operate the Stella June Sport Fishing Program that is based in Southern California in Los Cabos, Mexico. And today we are in beautiful Puerto Los Cabos, Mexico. And I'm going to give you a walk through our 2019 45C Hunter uh, that is just entering the market with Kossor uh, and Zach Zorn. Um, starting in the front here, uh, it's a sport fishing boat. Uh, we build our program around fishing. Everything we do is fishing. We're primarily a, a day-based operation. So for our particular operation, we prioritized fishability and room up front. Uh, I know a lot of manufacturers and a lot of big boats in this class like to build a lot of seating into their bow. Uh, we decided to keep it fairly open because we often fish with four, five, six guys up here, whether it's uh, visually fishing striped marlin, throwing the popper and jig uh, for tuna, both at home and down here. So we kept a very open bow layout that allows you to stack anglers, stack kill bags, and stack axis uh, however you really please. Um, under here, you're gonna see a big Ford fish box. We've put 300 pound tuna in here. Two side boxes can accommodate ah, 180, 200 pound fish, uh, one or two in each of these. For most of the fishing we do, we can usually put the entirety of our catch, Southern California bluefin catch, uh, Cabo San Lucas yellowfin catch, uh, in these front boxes, uh, close to a thousand pounds of fish. If we need more, with this open arrangement, you can add kill bags. You can put a couple 72 inch uh, reliable bags up here, 90 inch reliable bags, uh, which really allows you to supplement more space in if needed, but still have room for guys to sit up here and fish, which is really nice. Walking our way towards the back of the boat, you're gonna pass a lot of rod holders, lots of rod holders. You can never have too many rod holders, both on the house and on the gunnel. Adds a lot of space to store a menagerie of high quality fishing gear. At the wheel here, you're gonna see a variety of really nice features. One of those features is helping us right now. It's our auto lock system with the Yamaha engines, the spot point. We are sitting here filming this video and there is very little risk of me drifting into the swimming zone over here because the Yamahas are doing all the work for me. So it's kind of like having a second captain, which allows me to film with Zach here. Uh, another cool feature, as you can see, we have a sonar running. The boat is a CH500 searchlight sonar. Uh, which is great for tuna fishing. We use it for black marlin fishing. We use it for stripey fishing. We're very shallow right now, so it's hard to really see the picture. If you put this thing in 50, 60 feet of water, it would be a little easier. If you put it in 200, you're gonna see the benefit of a searchlight sonar. Even in a market where a lot of guys are using Omni sonars, a lot of guys still prefer some of the minute features on these CH500 units. We use it extensively every trip. Uh, we have a full Garmin suite of electronics. We really like Garmin. Uh, Garmin offers a lot of options for tying in other systems. We have a flare tied into our Garmin. We have our Furuno sonar tied into the Garmin. We have lighting tied into the Garmin uh, and a variety of other smaller niche things. Uh, this is all current software. Uh, it's a current system. Uh, we also have a Sea Keeper. It's engaged right now. Every time a boat comes by and throws a wake at us, uh, well, we don't really feel it, which is nice. It's a Sea Keeper 3 and it is located right below the seating here. Uh, walking towards the back of the boat, you're going to see that we have an extensive, extensive bait system. Uh, we are a live bait program. We do a live, lot of live baiting, both in Mexico and in California, but we like redundancy in our live bait. Something that's very important to us is being able to segregate different styles of bait in their own unique tanks. This is a 120 gallon custom tank. We have a rocket launcher mounted on top of it here. This came with the boat. We added it on top of this, which was a full custom job. We can jug this thing with I'd say six, seven scoops of high quality sardine, probably about 10 buckets if you're down here in Los Cabos, or probably two to 300 mackerel if you're gonna go to Mag Bay. Uh, it's a very nice piece, and it is plumbed off our central bait system that is located under my feet. Moving back here, we have our 50 gallon tank, and our 50 gallon tank. This is what we use for most of our everyday fishing. If I wanna bring 20 or 30 or 40 cabritos aside or an equivalent number of mackerel, I'll use these two ones here for our general day trips. On the back, you're gonna see a full rack of tubes. We built this for our black marlin fishery down here. Uh, these are the tubes that we prefer for our program. Uh, this is all a custom job. We work with our partners uh, in various areas to accomplish our goals with our tube system, and we're really happy with how it turned out. The survivability of Skipjack is as high as it gets with adequate flow and adequate tube design uh, for really the highest levels of tournament competitive live bait fishing. Um, if you go back to the front, which I'm not gonna do right now, we also have an additional uh, deck well up there, uh, which can hold uh, an additional 50 to 100 mackerel or cabritos. 
which we utilize quite often for our stripey fishing when we want to have a bow-based bait ready to go, since on the west coast here, we do do a lot of live baiting for billfish on the bow. If you look into the tower, you're going to see our very nice, aesthetically pleasing uh, rhino line, truck bed lined black tower. It's very unique to this boat. We feel that it offers a lot of protection from pitting and corrosion in the aluminum. We think it adds a lot of character to the boat as well. It is not very hot to the touch, so even in the heat of this region, it doesn't ever become uncomfortable for people to climb up and down and left and right. Uh, also up there, we can operate our sonar with a custom remote. So when I'm in the tower and uh, glassing around or working on fish in the tower, I can also have access to uh, my searchlight technologies. We also have a nice full-size Garmin screen up there that is fully networked into all the helm-based uh, capabilities as well as a second driving station and joystick controls so you can engage your lock point or your joystick control from the tower as well. You'll also notice that we have a nice set of double spreader marsh tacky riggers, carbon fiber poles. These are nice, these are stiff. We use them for, again, all of our competitive fishing. We've been very happy with the product. It's been on the boat for a couple of years now and we've noticed very little degradation in uh, these riggers. You don't have any pitting on them, you don't have any peeling on them, which is a common issue with carbon fiber poles. Uh, below deck here, we have a hooker bait system. Uh, we've worked with hooker for, for many years on a variety of our builds, and we felt like they did a good job for us here. We throw somewhere in the realm of 30 to 35,000 gallons of salt water through this boat at all times. Uh, so when we really want to boot this thing up, we can run every single element of our bait system concurrently. We never have to say, shut this off to get more flow everywhere else. And that is all independently run through uh, manifolds that we have down here, which we feel uh, have been built to spec and to par. Well, actually we feel they've been built above par. This boat has live bait capabilities that are frankly greater than most 80 or 90 foot sport fishers. If we were to continue uh, looking back, you're gonna see we have some very nice tackle storage under here. Uh, we also have this nice cushion up here. If I was to take this cushion off, I have additional rod storage underneath there. Um, we have a cooler underneath here, which is really nice. Uh, if you open that up, we can fill that with drinks and bait uh, and the like. We have all new batteries on this boat. Nice AGMs, Group 31s. They're located down in here. You'll like that because those batteries run this entire system. There is no generator, uh, but we feel like we can usually make uh, and create and maintain adequate power supplies for all of our fishing needs. Talking about these engines, because everybody loves engines, in an era where engines can be difficult and parts can be challenging, uh, we feel like we've done a really nice job uh, both maintaining these 425s, which I believe to be the nicest big boat engines on the market, uh, but we also built in a high level of redundancy in our parts supply down here in Mexico. So if somebody buys this boat, they're gonna be getting eight lower units, they're gonna be getting upper units, uh, uppers, they're gonna be getting uh, probably two years worth of various parts and components. Every one of these engines can be rebuilt out of our garage for the most part. Uh, and anything that is required beyond that, we have a really nice relationship with a very strong uh, and professional service provider on the West Coast uh, who will be able to provide you guys with really nice records and continue on the service regimen that this boat's been under since day one. So we're coming back towards the slip, probably for one of the last times uh, for me as a captain on this boat. and. You know, we're getting ready to send this boat on its way to the next owner, and it's hard not to reflect on the legacy of what this boat's been for both the current owner uh, and the current crew. Uh, when we got this boat, we were moving up from a 35-foot center console into this 45, uh, so we were pretty well exposed to the concept of center console fishing. Uh, what this boat did for us is hard to put in the words. We did a lot of team building on this boat, a lot of program building. Uh, this is a really fun boat to drive. Uh, we love to put this boat on plane. I love to feel this boat in the turn. I love to feel the wind on my face. It's kind of like the core reason uh, of why we do what we do, which is just listening to good music on a nice sound system on a boat as the sun sets over to Baja. And we did that down here for the last four years. We did it in California for four years as well. And now we're gonna send this boat on its way to start a new legacy with somebody else. Uh, this is a great day boat. This is gonna be the perfect boat for somebody who wants to get out, accomplish their goals, and then get home for their family. This is going to be a great tournament boat for somebody as well. We built a lot of big boat systems into a, a 45 foot center console. You know, a lot of things that were pretty innovative at the time and remain innovative to this day. So if you're somebody who wants to go out there and push, uh, you know, a center console, uh, 
you know, into a heavy competitive realm and get a lot of performance out of it from a fishing perspective, I think you're going to be really happy with this boat. Our fishing philosophy has always been a blend of high level tournament fishing and, you know, commercial fishing at its roots. So a lot of the systems on here are overbuilt specifically for high, high, high level fishing. So you guys are going to get a lot of enjoyment out of that. Uh, the boat shows well, it'll blend into any fleet, it'll blend into any program and it will look good on any dock anywhere in the world. So. That's about all from Puerto Los Cabos. If you guys are interested in uh, coming down and taking a look at the boat and talking to us about it further, uh, hit up Zach Zorn. He's a really good friend of mine and uh, I think he'll re represent you guys quite well on this platform. And uh, we'll see you soon, wherever it may be, whether it's Cabo or California or somewhere in between. Thanks guys, I'll talk to you later.